Rob McKillop here. I'm going to look at some books that I find very useful for teaching uh, in the modern style of guitar playing, so that's post-romantic, post-classical period, uh, when experiments were being made in compositional practices in Europe and elsewhere. And um, the books are a series called Guitar Cosmos by Reginald Smith Brindle. And uh, with an introduction by Julian Bream, and uh, he wrote pieces which Julian Bream played, um, contemporary classical pieces. Um, now, students, when they're learning, tend to learn 19th century studies, and uh, not many 20th century, and certainly even fewer 21st century studies. It's a great shame. So I'm going to play selected pieces from these books to give you an idea and if you study with me, then uh, you will be studying 19th century music, but also uh, these books. The books I principally use for teaching beginners, students, are Frederick Node's um, Solo Guitar Playing, Volume 1, and uh, the Sagreras books, um, which are all, both of those books are very easily available. Uh, these books by Reginald Smith Brindle are available from SHOT, C-H-O-T-T, S-C-H-O-T-T, <laughs> SHOT editions, and uh, they're quite easy to get hold of. Aeolian mode, it's one of the old church modes, old Greek scales. Um, look at the dynamics, first time mezzo forte, second time piano, here goes. Okay, um, I'd better keep moving on. This video will be very long. Over the page 24, simple serial melody. Now, a serial melody is a, a note where, for instance, uh, you have a chromatic scale of 12 notes and you give each note a number. And uh, you can play that scale in any order you want. It doesn't have to be from bottom to top. And... Uh, Whichever way you do it, the numbers must always appear in the same order as you work through a piece, because pretty soon you run out of the 12 notes, you have to start again, but you do the same order of 12 notes. Now, this is simple serial. Uh, ser serialism is a complex subject, but this is just a little introduction to it. So if you count 12 notes, you'll see the next note will be the same that you started with, and that's another 12 starting. So in the first bar we have D flat, C, B, and we count 12 notes and we end up with the second line, first bar, we have in the bass a D flat, C, B. Now on the last line it starts again the 12 notes, but instead of D flat is C sharp, which we should know it's the same note, just different way of spelling. Okay, so a simple serial melody. Contrast with serialism is atonalism, where they don't have the series of 12 notes that keep repeating, but 
you try and avoid any sense of there being a, a key. So atonal melody after Schoenberg. should have faded away as notated okay we're on book two now and we're looking at page 24 canto um, this is based on a whole tone scale no semitones in the scale and uh, il canto espressivo so be expressive as you can with the melody <laughs> Okay, moving on, now we have De Angelis, um, very tonal piece, it's based on the Kiri from the De Angelis Mass, um, take your time with us.
Now in book three, um, where things do get a bit strange, and uh, happily so, some really nice music in this piece. I'm going to start with the Ricordo de Luigi Dalla Piccola. Now, Luigi Dalla Piccola was a, a composer and teacher of uh, Reginald Smith Brendel, so it's an affectionate tribute to his teacher. Uh, I expect all my students to write such pieces. Um, here we go, Adagio Espressivo. I have recorded this on video before, at standard pitch, if you want to hear that. We also have uh, three inventions. The first one is to John Cage, a um, famous composer in the 20th century. Uh, so this is to John Cage, gently full of space.
So there you go. This is student repertoire for um, uh, post beginners, intermediate repertoire, and um, there are some more difficult pieces, some easier pieces, some which are just scales and arpeggios, but using interesting scales and interesting arpeggios. Um, so hats off to Reginald Smith Brindle, who's sadly no longer with us, and um, I do think his three books, one on the floor, three books um, should be in every teacher's library and uh, students too. Okay, that's it. Uh, if you like what I do, there is a tip jar which you can access below the video on YouTube.